Well, hey everyone, welcome to Walking with Disciples. We're in Acts chapters 27, um, just now picking up on Paul's journey to Rome. So the last couple days, chapter 25, 26, we've talked about um, Festus, the governor Festus, and Paul's appeal to Caesar. Acts chapter 26 was his presentation to King Agrippa and Queen Bernice, and um, Paul trying to save them. <laughs> Right. Awesome. Read Acts chapter 26. Listen to yesterday's. It'll give you a little bit of background on, on what's going on. And and Paul trying to save the king and the queen. Just just an amazing um, how God can lead somebody uh, if we follow him. Amen. So today um, we're going to cover uh, Acts chapter 27, just verses 1 through 12, because I want to set this up for tomorrow. Right. So. A um, couple of key, key points just to think about. This kind of give you a little bit of historical background, kind of what was going on. Um, also some things to think about uh, as we read it. So um, starting off, Acts chapter 27, verse 1. And when it was decided that we should sail for Italy, they delivered Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort named Julius. Right, And embarking in a ship uh, of something i can't i'm not sure what that that word is which was about to sail the ports um along the coast of asia we put to sea accompanied by aristocrus and uh, uh macedonian wow from thessalonica right tough words uh the next day we went we put in the sedan and and uh julius treated paul kindly and gave him leave to go to his friends and be cared for now, this is a theme throughout um, the remainder of Paul's life, that there are moments um, that his guards, you know, the, the ones keeping him, understand Paul's innocent. They, and they understand what, a, what, a, what a, a noble, intelligent man he is, right? And he's appealed to Caesar. So although he's in prison, in chains sometimes, He's, he's allowed some freedoms at other times. Now, now there's moments that we find out he's in a pit and he's chained up. There's moments that he's not treated very well. But this is one of those moments where he's treated well and he's able to go out. And, and it's great because this is where we get to see Paul um, being Paul again, going in and taking care of the churches that he's planted um, loving and, and taking care of people, right? So we see him writing some of his letters in these moments as well. Um, so it says that um, he was put in verse four and putting out to sea from um, there, we sailed under the lee of Cyp Cyprus uh, because the winds were against us. And when we had sailed across the open sea along the coast of Cilicia and Phiphilia, uh, we came to Myra and, and Lycia, um, again, talking about we sailed slowly, verse 7, a number of days and arrive at difficulty, right? So things are turning bad weather-wise. And we find out why here in just a moment. So uh, they continue to sail under the, the lee, right, of uh, Crete off uh, Salmon. Uh, coasting along, um, it was difficult. We came to the place called Fair Havens, uh, near which was the city of Lycia. Since much time had passed, the voyage was now dangerous. So much time meaning that it took us a long time to get there. Ever been on a car trip and it just, you know, you, you're heading down the road, I think going south sometimes, and you hit that, uh, hit 65 and there's traffic and construction and you're just stopped, right? That's kind of what was happening. And so they would got to this point and it was late. And, and Luke tells us, again, Luke's the, the writer of Acts. Luke tells us how late it was. He says, um, it, that verse uh, nine since much time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous because even the fast was already over. Paul advised them and he says, so. now um, this would be the day of atonement. So in, in this year, um, they, they guesstimate that it would have been September 24th. Now, why do I say guesstimate? Um, because the Jewish calendar is different than your calendar, or I guess our calendar, okay? Um, hence why certain dates float around. Easter floats around, right? There, there are certain things that float around. Um, Day of Atonement, right? Day of Pentecost. All those, they all flow around, right? They're not, it's not December 25th, Christmas, right? It's not on the Jewish calendar, FYI, right? Um, right. Thanksgiving, not, you know, uh, November 27th or not 
uh, November 20, or whatever, it is the fourth Thursday of the month, right? That one floats around, again, not on the Jewish calendar, but um, so, so their calendar and our calendar do not match, right? So um, what we know at this point, then it would have been late September, possibly early October, and that is the time, it's, it's winter. And uh, if you know anything about weather at all, you know that the winter is not the best time to be out doing stuff, right? Things begin to change, right? The fall season comes in, storms start to come in, start to roll in. And so that was, that's what was going on. Now, the Romans, Romans have actually a different calendar as well. And if you um, read uh, into the kind of the historical context of what's going on, um, their sailing season's a little bit longer, right? The the Jewish sailing season they would have ended by the fast time, right? And they would they would have started um, around around uh, um, I believe it's April time frame, right? Uh, what we consider the April time frame, okay? The, the good you know later spring um, through through late summer into early fall, and then they'd be done. Romans expanded a little bit more and they would have gone into no, November ish, right? Um, if they could. Okay. But Luke's saying, hey, it's past that point. It's time. And so Paul says to them, and I find this very interesting. Now, remember, remember what we had heard yesterday that, that Festus had accused Paul of great learning, right? Remember, he says, your great learning has, has, has made you mad, right? Has messed your brain up. And Paul says this, he, he says he advises them. Now remember, Paul is a tent maker. He's not, he's not a fisherman, right? He's not one of the disciples, you know, um, Peter, who's a fisherman. He's a tent maker, right? But he says, sir, I perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss, not only the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. And, and you know, it's interesting to me because Paul speaks up. And, and this is what Luke says. He says, but the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. And, and I read that one and it, and it, uh, I'll be honest. I'm like, well, duh, I w wouldn't you, if, if I was, you know, if I had Paul under, under my wing, if I was his guard and what do I know about Paul? Well, maybe I've learned that he's a tent maker. Um, but I definitely know that he's an intelligent man. He was a Pharisee, you know, and so I would have been like, well, what do you think? What do you think? You know, you don't know anything. You're not a fisherman. You're not a boat captain. Uh, of course, I'm going to listen to the pilot. I'm going to listen to the owner of the ship. They know better. They've got an, an invested piece into this, right? They lose their cargo. They're going to lose everything. You know, they're going to lose, if they lose their ship. They're going to lose everything. These guys know these waters, like the back of their hand, they're going to do it. And, you know, Luke, when he writes, and again, he's the writer of Acts, when he writes, he always puts things in there to try to speak to you and I to tell us something important, right? But it says, that, you know, again, the centurion paid more attention. And because the harbor was not suitable to spend the, the winter in, the majority decided to put out to sea uh, from there on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete facing both southwest and northwest and spend the winter there. Just a better harbor, a better place to, to winter. And so why, why does Luke even talk about this? Well, part of the reason is because we're going to see tomorrow that, 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 that they get into a storm, right? Paul is right. But I think the other part is that you and I need to be a lot more bold, right? And this is what I mean by that. Just because we're not sailors, just because we're not fishermen, just because we're not tent makers, just be, does not mean that God cannot speak to and through us. I believe, again, um, and, and we may not see the word pneuma here, spirit, right, in this moment, but I believe that Paul is continually in the spirit, and he's continually in the spirit that the spirit will tell him about things that are going to go on. In this case, tell him about something that he does not have the right knowledge for, right? Again, we, we don't know of Paul as being this incredible sailor, right? Has he ever even piloted a ship? We, we don't know. I would assume not 
just because, again, he was a Pharisee and he was a tent maker, you know, uh, right? And, and so I, I bring that out because I believe that you and I need to learn to walk in the Spirit in such a way that the Spirit can talk to us about any situation. And I was sharing this uh, with, with um, a, a couple of the guys the other day. We were just talking and they were sharing a story of working on their car and getting frustrated about working on their car and they couldn't figure this out. They couldn't figure out um, what was wrong with the car. They'd done all this stuff. And and as they were um, as they were laying on the ground on their creeper, right, underneath the car, they just began to pray. He said, I just began to pray and say, God, speak to me. Within 30 minutes, he had the car, car working. All right, so what happened? Was it just a coincidence? Did, did he get lucky? Or did the Spirit of God come and speak and breathe into him and tell him and give him wisdom that he did not have? That ability all of a sudden to be able to see something and he'd been looking at it forever and to be able to see it at that right moment. I believe that's what God wants to do. That's what Paul was doing in this moment. That I believe that God spoke to him. The Spirit spoke to him and said, Hey, Paul, you may not be a pilot, you may not be a, a ship's captain, but you all, you need to tell them, you need to let them know because it's not going to go well. And the great thing, we're going to talk about it tomorrow, is even when it doesn't go well, because he spoke up, this gives Paul an opportunity to, to bring a testimony of power into these individuals. So tomorrow we're going to pick up um, in, in the storm at sea. We're going to we'll, we'll walk through... Um, the next part of Acts chapter 27 on and Paul's journey, and in this case, the shipwreck that happens.